Every day it begins thusly. May 16th, around 1.30. Off to have the Passover meal. And to explain is that there, is two, there are two Passovers for Christians. There is the first Passover of Moses. And then there is a second Passover of Christ. the second Passover of Christ not just for one day because we were preparing for more, for more than 50 days but the celebration itself lasts 50 days this is the way Christmas doesn't come just on one day of the year Christmas is celebrated uh, almost throughout the entire month And the celebrations are frequent because every liturgy which happens often, not just Saturdays, is not, is not uh, on Sundays. Every major feast, the saint or whatever, whatever family member is having the celebration of that day, there is a liturgy, and the liturgy is the life of Christ, including the birth and the resurrection. So you have both Christmas and Pascha, in every single uh, liturgy, this is the reason for the length of the, 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 the length of the liturgy because it's a, it's an entire life of Christ. And the thing is, we're not remembering the life of Christ in the Eastern Christian Church. The purposes of meditation, the, the awareness you're trying to achieve, is a spiritual awareness that you are stepped in the services to remove space and time and that you are you are present at all points in time and in space with Christ so you are at the birth you are at the nativity you are at Passover you are at all the points of life uh, at the point in time in Christ's life at the same time you are present for all the points in life that were, that were significant to that particular saint that you're celebrating that day. If the, if the liturgy happens to fall on, weeks, uh, on, on a piece of a particular saint. In other words, these are all family occasions. And rather than remembering the family occasions, the services transport you. There is the mechanism of... The services are the mechanism of transport if we have such awareness. But we do not have this awareness, so we place physical things and have meditations so that we can, at some point in time, achieve this particular awareness. And the thing is, that what people don't understand about icons, you have these, oh, you have a lot of icons, you have a lot of so called religious symbols. Well, no, not really. Why? Because these are my family members. There's my mother, there's my father, there's the uh, with my mother, uh, there is my brother, Christ, my brother. And with them is but undepicted is both the Alpha and Omega, the Holy Spirit, and the, the Father and the Holy Spirit. Those are all there. They're all depicted in, in, in a sense. Because the Holy Spirit and the Father have no form to depict them. Well, there is no picture of the Father in the early Christian icons because there is no image of the Father ever depicted. There is also no image of the Holy Spirit ever depicted. The only, thi the only image that is known is the face of Christ. So 
well, these are the things we have to understand as we're looking at our church, in the church, in sort of a spiritual direction, is what's involved in, the, in terms of the details. And the thing is, these aren't, it's not a religion because we're not forced. These aren't rules that we follow. These are choices. These are things that we choose to do. And a relationship that we choose to have, we choose to love God. There is also the fear of God, but the thing is, once the love has been achieved, once we're on the path of the love, the path of the love, of love, overshadows that of fear. So love replaces fear. And this is what we, what we should be striving for life with all events, with all issues. We should be all love it. We should strive to be like, you know, like the Father, all forgiven. We need to sheathe, like we sheathe the sword. There is a sword of righteousness. In order to be like the Father, we have to put away our sword of righteousness. We have to sheathe the sword of righteousness and be patient, be forgiving, be loving like the Father. In other words, this is our Father thing. When you see people who not only wield and use the sword of righteousness, you'll find that more often than not these people have no sense of peace. In today's meaning, it means that the haters are always angry. They're never. They're never happy. They never achieve happiness, and it's because they never put away the happy. They never put. They never put away their anger. They never put away their self righteousness. This is the position of extreme selfishness. And this is why you have the meditations, the first meditations, in terms of the goals. The goals of the first meditation. The primary goal. All this meditation is peace, humility, selflessness. Without the selflessness, you can't achieve the rest. And the thing is, without neutral chin, you can't achieve the self, the deep selflessness. You will always remain in a state of selfishness, and this will become your grave. While we don't take our physical possessions with us, we do take our well, psychological or soul possessions with us. What are our soul possessions? These are our, what we call baggage, the emotional baggage. All of that goes with us. Emotional baggage is anger, hatred, jealousy. All that's going to go with you. That's the baggage you take with you. The one that always says, "Is your house in order?" Well, what is your? Don't look at your physical house. Look at your soul, which is the house. The soul is the house because this is the eternal house. This is the temple. What does it look like? Is it erect? Is it messy? Is it in shambles? Is it dirty? Unclean? What does it look like? What does your soul, what does your house look like? But that's where you're going to be living for eternity. We, we are here on earth. And on earth, we either create our heaven or we create our hell. Now, this is present in almost all religions. What is not present is the relationship that you have with God.
and the nature of the humans. This is distinct from all others. In no others do you become one with God. No, uh, no other do you come, become family with God. And no other are the mistakes that you made, the emotional baggage. They stay with you and all the others. In the family of God, Forgiveness is the removal of the emotional baggage. You will relieve of the bags that you are bringing with you so that you can have a peaceful, loving existence from that are on up. Otherwise, the things that pain you are removed. My brother's here. Day. We were a little late in our meal. Was it Pascha's for 50 days? And so, although it was late on the day, we are still well one day. Pascha. about uh, uh, 22 hours into the day. The editing looks uh, on the vlogs looks pretty good. We do have the uh, the second the second vlog, the ride vlog, holding its own. And this is where we're going to talk about the interest in the Barchester Chronicles, which was set based on a novel from the 1850s but was filmed in 1982 uh, it's a BBC production and they do a good job the, the English well, as was Dostoevsky were rather wordy there's a lot of explanation that one has to sort of sift through before you can get a, well, a better understanding. Of course, all the understanding is in the nature of the sort of the, uh, of the wordiness. It's to never convey the true feelings, the true sense, the true emotions of a particular moment that is felt by the person conveying them, but rather to pay, pay heed or pay attention primarily to what we would call proprietary. Uh, so not, not proprietary. Propriety. <laughs> well, sometimes again in the world, words that are spot. We are clear. And we are clear to go. Propriety is a matter on how you speak. It's how you phrase your words, what you say, so as not to offend someone else. 
Otherwise, that's the whole goal is that you want to say things, but in a roundabout fashion that so that the other person doesn't necessarily take offense, but rather offense can be not necessarily stated but implied uh, within how the words are phrased, how the sentiment or the statement is phrased, this will sort of convey, assume the person understands, the sort of sentiment around a particular emotion or a particular issue. And the thing is, is that this is something that women know quite well. Women know how to use words that will attack and slice and cut their fellow, well, their fellow women. They understand the nature of women's sensitivities, or should say female sensitivities, more than a man would ever. So there's ne ne never a question as to, as to how uh, particularly women will sort of take something because their sense is uh, fundamentally different than a man because their cares are different than men. Well, that is not true for everybody, but generally speaking, yes. And so this becomes the question of the nature of propriety, of, of propriety. So you get the proprietary is about ownership. Propriety is about the words. The properness, the properness of a particular word rather than the property of a particular word. Although you can talk about the properties of words as well. This would, this would be diction. The diction gives you the <laughs> properties. It gives you the properties of words. So that you may properly convey a sentiment or an idea, an emotion, a feeling, a statement without creating offense. In other words, you don't want to appear crude, vulgar, insensitive, and they also use the term Philistine and Cretan. Of course, the Philistines were the Palestinians, and the uh, Cretans, well, they're from Crete. And ironically enough, the term vulgar refers to the Bulgarians. So one can get an understanding within these languages how they felt about other people the natures of other people. And yet, the whole thing is set and framed within the structure of the church. And while they always talk about, wasn't too sure what that guy was going to do, you can't just go barreling through. So what happens is that a lot of times within the church, within the church structure, they select phrases from the gospel and what they call the holy scriptures to suit their own needs. But yet they neglect some of the more important words spoken by Christ. And the ones in particular talk about humility. And this is the last or the final judgment. Where the goats are separated from the sheep. The goats 
are going to go off to slaughter and not be saved. Well, the sheep will be saved. And the statement that is puzzled by both is the same statement that is applied to both of them. It said, you, you saw me, you clothed me, you fed me. I was naked, poor, and hungry. And she said to the goats, same thing, but you didn't feed me, you didn't clothe me. And both said, Lord, Lord, when did we see you naked, cold, and hungry, and tired, or, or and what have you? And the answer was, that you do to the least of men, you do to me. And here, the, con the, the term men is typically in Greek, anthropos. And so you're not talking about man, the gender, you're talking about man, the species, you're talking about the anthropos, the anthropos man, the anthropo anthropomor <laughs> the anthropomorphic man. So there is no gender there. And so that's the, that's that's the final judgment. How did you treat others? How did you treat the least of men. Both the poor, the hungry, the prostitutes, the, 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 the harlots, the beggars, as in uh, Lazarus the beggar and the rich man who ended up in hell, and Lazarus ended up in heaven, in the arms of Abraham, the bosoms of Abraham. How do these people who live in these societies particularly at the upper level, how do they answer these questions? They may look good, they may dress well, and they have fine things to eat, and may attempt to be the most virtuous person in the world, in terms of following the rules, following the letter of the law, and being absolutely strict about this. Yet what happens is, the reality is as su such, do they consider, them, consider themselves equal to the, Lord, to, to the least of men? Do they cry out as the publican did, Lord have mercy, or do they boast their own praises? They praise themselves in their praises. Which is their nature? And this will determine where they end up going.